one first impression. As I mentioned, you get one first impression. So everyone's got to play to their strengths. You're like, all right, Samir, I heard you say that enough. So my favorite subject happens to be history. Okay? My favorite subject. I love history. Love reading history, a pastime of mine. So I built a little bit of a profile speaking to financial advisory, financial services audiences in the United States. So I always joke, if you're young and brown like me and you're speaking to an older homogeneous audience, you better be funny, you better know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay? So I'll give you an example of how I played into my strengths. I was at an event in New York, and there were a number of very senior portfolio managers and hedge fund managers. And there were two gentlemen arguing, John and Matt. Now John is saying, I do what's best for my clients because I get the best rate of return and I've outperformed my peers and I'm the best. And I care about my clients more than anyone else. Matt's like, well, John, you run your own firm. There are many opportunities where you're not actually providing true financial planning. You're providing investment, but you're saying that you're doing everything for your clients that you can. But you even described to me where you had a client whose business and someone passed away, liquidated the most opportune time. And you talked about how there are ways that he should have done it. You didn't even provide them any information. You couldn't. Not Matt, I don't care. I'm still doing what's best. So there's a group of eight people surrounding John and Matt. And John, let's just say, is um, let's just say he's a little bit overconfident about his situation, and he just wants to talk about how he's got the best rate of return and he's the best because of that. So Matt basically turns to the group and starts going down all the eight, nine people around the circle. Right? And he's saying, what do you think? What do you think? So everyone's kind of like, John, well, you could have done more for your kids. You can't say you did everything you could when you didn't. Right? And you, when these are people that are really close to you. And I'm just standing there like this with my hands, and I'm literally saying nothing. There's some of you thinking, like, is that really possible? <laughs> um, and so it finally gets to me. and. He said, well, what do you think? What's your answer? Well, my name is Samir Samal, and this conversation reminds me of when aspiring Senator Lincoln was debating Judge Douglas in 1858. Hmm, now I got their attention. And after Judge Douglas had spoken, I believe in debate number five, Mr. Lincoln said that Judge Douglas, sorry, John, this argument is so thin that it reminds me of a soup that has been made from the shadow of a pigeon that has been boiled and starved to death. Pretty thin argument. <laughs> so now these guys just erupt in laughter. Like, they're like, forget about this conversation. What happened next? What happened next? And I continue. I said, well, Mr. Lincoln continued and said, Judge Douglas has created such a specious and fantastic arrangement of words that he has actually proven that a horse chestnut is the same as a chestnut colored horse. And now these guys are, so I've spoken for literally a minute, right? One minute, and I've made a bunch of life lifelong and for the rest of their lives, they will associate me with Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously one of the most humbling things I could have done. Even to this day, two of them uh, I do some business with, and, I, and I'll meet them, and I'll say, like, oh, then tell, tell us something about Lincoln. They only want to talk, like, you, Indian, tell me about Lincoln. <laughs> so, I'm trying to give you an example of how I played to my strengths in terms of history, and I use that to be able to build relationships.